everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we're going to be looking at going from moles to mass, which is grams, for stoichiometry problems. So let's get right into it. So remember, you first need to always look at your chemical equation and make sure it's balanced. If it's not balanced, go ahead and balance it before you even read your question. It doesn't matter what stoichiometry problem you're going to do, you're going to need a balanced chemical equation. If you don't remember how to do that, I'll go ahead and link my video of how to balance chemical equations in the description below. Okay, so molar mass. Just a quick review on how to do molar mass. You are going to look up on the periodic table each one of the elements that make up your compound. So if we're doing H2O, I would look up hydrogen on the periodic table. It is 1.01. .01. I would look up oxygen. It is 16. Because we have two hydrogen, I need to go ahead and multiply my um, hydrogen number by two before I add it to my oxygen. So I end up getting a total of 18.02. And if this is not in depth enough review, I'll go ahead and leave my molar mass video um, in the description below as well, okay? All right, so here's our roadmap we've been looking at. Check out my other videos on stoichiometry. If this is your first one, you might wanna start with mole to mole, okay? So um, in this one, we are gonna be starting on a green block like always, ending on a red block like always, and we are actually gonna start with our moles of our starting compound, and then we are going to transfer that to moles of the compound that we wanna finish with, um, and then converting that to grams of our ending compound or element, whichever one the question asks for. So notice we are passing through two arrows, which means we have two T's in our bridge. In other words, this is a two-step problem. So you can um, fill out your bridge accordingly with those two T's and make sure that we don't miss anything. So our first question says, how many grams of CO2 would be produced if 3.2 moles of carbon reacted with an excess iron three oxide? First up, this equation is balanced. I went ahead and checked it already, um, but I need you guys to make sure you're always checking to make sure your equation is balanced. If not, balance it first and then do your bridge second, okay? Now let's kind of lay out our roadmap and make sure we know where we're going. We always start with our given number. In this case, it's given moles. We want to end up going to a mole to mole ratio from, from our balanced chemical equation. So we can have that moles in the middle converting into um, the desired compound or element in moles so that we can eventually turn it into grams. And we turn it into grams by doing our molar mass ratio. So let's see how this looks. We're going to do our given, which is 3.2 moles of carbon. Diagonal down has to be the same unit, so moles of carbon. We know we are gonna use our mole to mole ratio from our equation. So we're looking up carbon and it's right here. We have three moles of carbon in this equation. So we're gonna put three moles of carbon. So what is the top number then? The top number is whatever you wanna turn it into, but we're gonna keep it with moles, right? This is a mole to mole ratio. So our question says, how many grams of CO2? So we need to look for CO2 in our, in our chemical equation. It's right here. And we have three of them. It's the big number in front. So this is gonna be three moles of CO2. And just a side note, this is a, a three to three ratio, which really means one to one. Either way, it's gonna turn out the same math, you guys, okay? So we can cancel out our units. Moles of carbon and moles of carbon, go ahead and cancel out. Now we can work our way over to turning our moles of carbon dioxide into grams of carbon dioxide because our question says how many grams of CO2? The top right hand corner is always what the question asks for. In other words, grams of CO2. And we know diagonal down is going to be moles of CO2. It has to be the same units. And we know that one mole is equal to the molar mass of anything. So if we look up on the periodic table, one carbon and an oxygen and multiply that by two, since we have two of those, add them all up together, you end up getting 44.01 grams of CO2. So that's the molar mass of carbon dioxide. It's always equal to one mole. Now we can cancel out our units, one mole of CO2 uh, or moles of CO2 to moles of CO2 cancel and do our math. Our math is the same for every bridge. You multiply the top, you multiply the bottom, and then we divide. So it looks like this in your calculator. Three times two times three times 44.01 
and you end up getting 422.5, then you're gonna multiply the bottom. Three times one equals three. Now you're gonna put these in your calculator and divide. The top number goes in the calculator first. So you're gonna type in 422.5 divided by three, and you end up getting 140.3.83 grams of CO2. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. So we're using our same chemical equation, so we know it's balanced already, we don't have to worry about that. And this one says, how many grams of Fe would be produced if 4.3 moles of carbon reacted with an excess of Fe2O3? So we're gonna set up our problem the same way, given moles, mole to mole ratio, and then molar mass ratio. Put in what you know, 4.3 moles of carbon, diagonal down is gonna be moles of carbon, and it's gonna be from our balanced chemical equation. So three moles of carbon. Well, what are we wanting to turn it into? Grams of iron, Fe. So we're gonna look up here at our equation for Fe, and we're just gonna keep it a mole, right? We can't go directly from moles to grams of carbon to Fe, so we have to convert it to moles of Fe first. So this is gonna be four moles of Fe, and then we can cancel out moles of carbon and moles of carbon, perfect. Now we can go ahead and just change moles of Fe to grams of Fe, which is what our problem asks for. How many grams of Fe? And that's gonna go right here, grams of Fe. Diagonal down is gonna be moles of Fe. So we know that one mole of Fe equals the molar mass from the periodic table, which is 55.85 grams. Go ahead, cancel your units and multiply the top. You get 960.62, multiply the bottom, which is just three, divide it in your calculator and you end up getting 320.21 grams of Fe. Okay, I want you to do this one 100% by yourself. Pause the video and see if you can get it right and we're gonna go over it in a second. Okay, let's go ahead and go over it. First up, this is a new equation and it's not balanced. So I need you to make sure that you balance your chemical equation correct. So go ahead and check this out. Did you put a two in front of the H2? and a two in front of the H2O. If you did, you got it right, that's awesome. Now we can work our way into the bridge, right? So the question says, how many grams of water are produced if 0.98 moles of O2 react with an excess of H2? So we're gonna start with what we know, our given moles. We're gonna transfer it to mole to mole ratio, and then we're gonna do our molar mass ratio, and then we'll be good to go. So. Uh, 0.98 moles of O2 is what we start with. Diagonal down has to be moles of O2 from our equation, and we don't have anything written in front, which means it's an understood one. Now, what do we wanna turn this into? Grams of water. Water is H2O, so we have two of these here. So that's gonna be two moles of H2O. So we can cross off our um, units that are diagonal and down from each other. Diagonal and down again have to be the same, moles of H2O. So moles of H2O are gonna be on the bottom. It's gonna be one of those. One mole of H2O is equivalent to the grams of H2O, and you go look for that on the periodic table to find the molar mass, and we just did that earlier in the example and found that it was 18.02 grams of H2O. Cancel out those units, multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then divide, and you end up getting 35.32 grams of H2O. I hope this was helpful, you guys. If you liked it, please hit that like button for me. Subscribe to my channel to see more and look for my other stoichiometry videos if you need help with them. Thank you guys so much. Bye, everybody.